And this is Ryan Fisher with 20 Spokes, a development agency. So he's been instrumental and his team has been instrumental in, uh, in helping us get as far as we have so far. Uh, so I, if you were here a few weeks ago for George I's presentation, uh, Good Work Chicago is his firm, he introduced me to the hashtag pissed off optimist. And I guess that kind of describes me and, and kind of one of the motivations for our voice. Uh, pissed off because of uh, the issues related to inequality and, uh, and kind of rampant wage theft. Optimist in thinking that I can actually do something about that. So that's what uh, our voice is about. So uh, a little over a year ago, I was flying back from South by Southwest. I attended the interactive uh, track. Uh, there's kind of a uh, we can change the world vibe in uh, in much of that. And I was on the plane reading uh, Harper's Magazine and reading this article called The Spy Who Fired Me. And it was about workplace monitoring. For example, your UPS driver is tracked basically to the second uh, to determine whether or not he's ahead or behind. Uh, and there's a lot of that uh, kind of technology and techniques being applied now to uh, mostly hourly work. And they also talked about just-in-time scheduling, which is a technique where your work schedule can be highly variable from day to day, even down to using uh, predictive analytics, uh, looking at the weather to decide how many people to schedule for the next day. The problem with that, if uh, you're one of those workers, is it's very hard to plan your life. So it makes it hard to work a second job, makes it hard to go to school at night. Uh, so you're kind of trapped in, in this uh, kind of problem uh, area. And so my reaction to that was, it seemed like technology was being used to basically screw the little guy. Uh, and, to, and there was nothing working the other way. So the question that came to my mind was, what can be done about that? How can I use information technology to work the other way and kind of restore the balance somewhat? So our voice ultimately is kind of the response to that, that moment. So in my research, uh, so I knew there was a problem. I didn't know the extent of the problem. And here's an example of one of those issues. Uh, I referred to wage theft. So let me define wage theft because in a previous talk, uh, somebody came back and said, I don't know what wage theft is. Please explain it. Um, so if, if you work a certain number of hours and don't get paid for all of those hours, that's wage theft. If you work overtime, and don't get paid the correct overtime rate, that's wage theft. If you work for tips and are sent to the back storeroom to clean it out or rearrange it and can't collect tips uh, while you're working, that's wage theft. So there are all kinds of varieties of wage theft. The most recent uh, example being uh, Domino's, and this is Domino's Corporate. Uh, their payroll system actually systematically shorted people on their pay. Uh, so the New York State Attorney General is going after them. I hope the Illinois Attorney General, Lisa Madigan, does the same thing because that's a huge amount of money. So it's estimated that wage theft is about a $50 billion problem in the United States. So that, that's a huge amount of money if, and thinking from an economist standpoint, if you could reintroduce that money to those workers, give them money that they actually earned, uh, that would be a $50 billion stimulus to the economy every year, which would be huge. So that, that's kind of the, the thinking behind that. This chart relates to a UIC study uh, that was done several years ago where they looked at very low wage hourly workers. They brought them in, had them bring their pay stubs and other documentation and determined if they were paid properly. And as you can see from the chart, this is for the prior week. 67% of those workers weren't properly paid for overtime if they worked overtime. So that just the prior week, which just uh, boggled my mind. So I knew there, were, there was an issue. And the, the idea or the, the, the theme of the, re the response to that is, uh, in, in our voices terms, transparency. And so this is a bit different transparency 
than what we usually talk about here at Hack Night. That's, we're usually talking about government transparency, making government data transparent to the, the rest of to the citizens uh, and then doing something positive with this, with that. This is a little bit different and in some ways going the reverse direction. So this is crowdsource transparency or worker source transparency, getting data from the workplace through the workers and potentially uh, providing that data to the government for enforcement purposes. And I'll get into a little bit more detail why I think that would be effective. But that data could also be used uh, for, from the workers for labor unions and for plaintiff attorneys who are filing uh, wage theft lawsuits, which are uh, becoming much more prevalent for a variety of reasons. So the idea is that workers can report on working conditions on kind of a systematic basis. So this is not a complete app that you may have seen like a, a C-click fix or something like that. The idea is you rate your employer on uh, several different dimensions, and then on an ongoing basis, you answer a variety of questions uh, such as, how do you get paid? Uh, so you can get paid cash, check, direct deposit, or debit card or payroll card. Uh, the issue with uh, payroll cards is it costs you money to use your own money. So there's a service charge every time you use it. So it's a bad idea. Uh, so when people answer this question, how do you get paid? We tell them in Illinois, the law is your employer can't force you to be paid by a payroll card. Uh, be, they have to give you a choice of, of one of the other methods, uh, which is a basic protection. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that. So one of the themes that it, we learned in our research was people don't know their rights. So part of what Our Voice also does is educate people on their rights in addition to collecting all this data. They can also see ratings on other employers, so that's the kind of the crowdsourcing. So uh, one worker reports or rates their employer on these different dimensions. They can see ratings on other employers as well. This is a bit different than Glassdoor, so one of the early things that I looked at obviously was Glassdoor. A Glassdoor really caters to white collar employees. Uh, so it asks questions like, do you believe in the vision of the CEO? Well, the fry cook at McDonald's doesn't really care about the vision of the CEO. He has much more pragmatic concerns, like safety uh, and respect. How many hours a week do you get? That kind of thing. So the idea is we can collect a lot of data. We can anonymize that, aggregate it, provide it to various worker advocates, again, such as labor unions, plaintiff attorneys, and enforcement officials. So uh, what we've, we, Ryan and his team, uh, have built so far is a, a mobile-first web app. I'm showing you kind of the desktop version uh, just because it's easier to see. Uh, so this highlights some of the, some of the basic functionality. So, People can track their hours to make sure they're getting paid. So back to the wage theft example of uh, people getting shorted on their hours. So this, this uh, requirement came from a Starbucks worker who said, you know, I'd like to have the peace of mind to know that my supervisor is tracking my hours properly. Uh, so I'd like to see, be able to see that. This gives people a way to document their hours, which is essential for trying to uh, prosecute a wage theft case. This is an example of another question that we ask. And again, we ask a new question every day. So it's not like a survey. It's kind of an ongoing dialogue. Uh, and so they answer that. And then they see an insight that's related to their, their rights. Right now, we just do it for Illinois. Uh, the idea is to have uh, insights re regarding people's rights that is specific to the jurisdiction that they're, they're working in. So that's, that's a future kind of thing. And then they can see ratings on uh, various employers, distance from home, and uh, put that on a watch list in case they want to track that employer to see if they want to uh, work for them in the future. Yeah, one good thing for the employer recommendations for the percentage is something we know is everyone's, what they look for, how you evaluate a job is different. This is a huge lesson Don taught me was, for example, someone, their distance is so important because they have to get back home to their family where safety is in the and everything else. So one person's rating is not the same for the other. 
So that's one of the great things here is, is where the rating is based on your priorities for your preferences versus others. So yeah, I mentioned the several dimensions. There are six dimensions. It's uh, hourly wage, hours, schedule notice, how far in advance you get your schedule, because as I talked about, just in time scheduling, respect, advancement, and safety. So you can prioritize those six, and so that we kind of come up with a weighted recommendation for you. Give you a sense of what things look like on the phone. This is the hour tracker functionality, so they can track their shifts uh, for different employers if they have different uh, several jobs. Then they can build up a timesheet for that pay period, email it to themselves, and that way they have some documentation again if they have to. Uh, do something about that, or if they're shorted and they want to do something about that. This is just a starter list of challenges. I'm going to ask Ryan to, to add to it. Sure. So, so we understood that we had to go mobile first. Sometime, very often, it's the phone that's the only data connection for uh, low-wage workers, so we had to work for mobile. Uh, couldn't really afford to build two native apps. This is, this is a self-funded project. Uh, so we wanted to go a kind of a cheaper route, and the, the advice that I was given was you can, you can build a web app these days that's actually pretty good and want to go faster. There are other challenges I'm sure you had to overcome. Yeah, I look around, and everyone has, I bet 60% here are iPhones or are Macs and everything else. It's the other way around when we work on something like that. That's another reason we want responsive, because Android is a primary target for what we're going for. So we're seeing that was the customer base. Um, you know, something that we learned with a lot of it, everyone has fancy words, algorithms and all this fancy stuff. Some of the problems we had was breaking it down simple, such as get an employer. So if I'm an employer and I work at McDonald's, well, McDonald's at one corner is different than the McDonald's at another place. So we had to find a way, so when people put in their jobs, it was job and a location. Now the question is, how do you get all of the United States information for every single job and location in the database? We didn't do that. Um, but we were able to use solve that by looking at Google Maps and Google Search. So we actually use Google Places specified by business, and that's how we find um, a job based on the location and track that from that one. So there's always a little simple way of getting around these data things that seem like a big pro uh, problem. Another thing we're actually working on right now is just a simple input. We're finding that people don't want to input their employer, and that's a big thing for what we're doing. So we want to get the conversion rate as high as we can get for people to actually put where they're working at. And the fear is just that uh, being anonymous. They're afraid that they're going to attract and everything. So we're really just hacking at it, trying to see how we get that message clear to people that we're not sharing this, we're not letting anyone know, and this will only benefit you. There is a big fear of that, of sharing that, and what the repercussions would be of rating your employer when it comes to this. So that's one we're actually tackling right now, and we, we have five different steps of how we're gonna measure it. So. Um, and we're also uh, just made contact with the Chicago User Testing Group, Dan O'Neill's uh, old organization, and hope to, to work with them. Uh, I think they, they'd be very well suited to helping us get access to the right kind of people to to test the app, so that's just one one approach that we're we're taking. Um, why don't you take this one as well? <laughs> the, the, the fancy code stuff. Um, no Python. I know there's a Python person here. I heard that over there. Um, looked at it though. Uh, we chose Rails as our backend. Um, one of the big things to hear is actually probably a keyword everyone hears was is React. Uh, who knows React? I've heard of it. Um, we chose React, which is great um, because one of the things we can do with React is the presence of React Native. We built a lot of the front end logic in React and Redux, which that means is when we go to native apps, which is becoming a big thing we've been talking about, just to have the simple icon on the phone is a big difference than going to a web page. So it's, it's worth it to that point. So we went React with the intent to go React Native by sharing that code. So that, that new technology has really been a big help for what we're going at. And again, you know, I mentioned about Google Maps and places, but it's a great example of how this huge problem, this data, and finding it, it's out there and simple to use. You just have to be a little creative to get around to get in it. Cool. So that, that's kind of the mobile app side of things. And that's developed. It's out there, slowly getting adoption. Um, and we, we hope and we'll, we'll make sure that that starts to accelerate. The next phase uh, piece of this is the analytics portion, which is probably a little bit more uh, aligned to what this group is doing. So the idea is 
Back to those worker advocates, the labor unions, the plaintiff attorneys doing wage theft lawsuits, uh, and hopefully uh, government enforcement officials. We think, you know, once this gets going, we can provide um, a ton of data that can be used to help them. I talked to, uh, almost a year ago, someone from uh, SEIU, which is the major service employees uh, union. He said this could be a game changer. Uh, if you understand how the organizing process works, it's extremely labor intensive. You have organizers hanging out in the parking lot at McDonald's waiting for people to come off their shifts and then striking up a conversation. Uh, not that there's a substitute for the one-to-one -one interaction, but being able to identify hot spots, bad locations, uh, locations uh, maybe in co that have something in common, like the same franchisee, which is uh, what you'll see in uh, wage theft lawsuits, uh, particularly in New York State, which has done a great job of uh, going after people. It's often uh, one franchisee who owns five different locations and they have a common problem. So being able to see those kinds of patterns through data would be very effective. I also think it would be very effective for enforcement. So most enforcement is complaint driven. So somebody has to file a formal complaint. So for example, here in the city of Chicago, which now has to enforce the minimum wage standard of, uh, well, I guess it'll be 1050 starting July 1st, they will only re respond to formal complaints. Uh, here's my problem with that. Uh, people have to know their rights are being violated. They have to decide to do something about it despite the fact that there's a high incidence of retaliation. If you want to go back to the UIC study, that's an absolutely legitimate fear of being retaliated for filing a complaint or even speaking up. And then they have to figure out how to complain. And then that complaint goes to a government agency that is almost for sure underfunded uh, and so is behind. So I've talked to uh, Business Affairs and Consumer Protection here in Chicago, which uh, enforces the minimum wage law here in Chicago, and the Illinois Department of Labor. And there's a certain amount of, you know, we do it our way, we, we respond to complaints, uh, we really would not like more data that would tell us that there are additional problems <laughs> that we would have to respond to. Uh, so, you know, I see what you're getting at, but I'm not sure. Uh, we're ready to do that. So th it might be a little bit of a longer issue for our uh, uh, pattern to, uh, to get to the enforcement side, but hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna connect that. A uh, little mood lighting. So uh, I think actually uh, the labor attorneys might be the most direct route for uh, monetization, as the startup kids say, uh, it, because I think their interests are much more direct in, in terms of they can see the path to um, getting more customers and they, they understand lead generation and things like that. So, and I've a uh, little too presentation dependent. Yeah, um, one thing with that, ahead. as we're looking at that screen, th everything Don said, he brought that to us. He's like, put this up there with all this data. And we're like, oh, shoot, how do we do this? And one of the big thing that we, we're, we have to look at the target audience for all of that. And, and we have so much data that it's overwhelming. So we really looked at what are the key numbers for it and how to get people's focus on it. So, for example, a, a simple graph that we did for just solid line with dots that shows your locations and how they um, and where they rank from. It's impactful when you go on. You see, wow, I've won at 80 percent, but one at 40 percent. It's easy. We want people to see it and have a reaction to it and be able to use it. Um, and I started researching what lawyers have to do to identify classes or certify classes for class action lawsuits. So there's something called Rule 23 that has umpteen different paragraphs in terms of criteria for how to certify a class. Uh, analytics could be super, super helpful uh, in doing that. And yeah, we, 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 we see a lot of like, you know, heat maps, every other chart that you can put up there. It's not always useful. That's just straight being straightforward. You have to look at who's really going to take a look at it and you have to really find what's the right medium. And a lot of times less is more. And it really goes into it when it comes to this analytics when trying to get people to look at it. So the dashboard that was up there, that uh, right now that's just a mock up. What we're now trying to do is arrange meetings with these various worker advocate uh, groups to 
kind of validate uh, the design, get more requirements, and then so that you can actually build it. Um, it's all data we have. It's, there's nothing up there that's mocked. So there are a variety of ways to do that. So heat maps, uh, one of my favorite. Um, we fight against it sometimes. Our, our internal discussions are always lively. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ryan is not one of those, I'll just do whatever you tell me to do kind of guys, which I, which I appreciate <laughs> most of the time. Um, the, the challenges going forward, long-term challenges, are obviously the adoption. This is kind of, we have to achieve some network effects of uh, users providing employer ratings, having more employer ratings gets more users, and so on. So we're trying to get those network effects going, which is, which is always challenging. And then um, we have to make sure that data is credible. So I think there's some analytics or uh, machine learning can kind of help there to make sure that the ratings are credible. There's always controversy over with uh, Yelp in terms of can you trust all the ratings. I think what we're doing makes, makes this process easier and more amenable to some analytics that make sure uh, that uh, the data is credible, um, but uh, we haven't really figured out what that approach is. We're um, actually user testing you right now, how you react to different light schemes yeah. and presentations, so, so thank you. Anybody uh, study the Hawthorne effect in, uh, in business school? Uh, anyway, sorry, very, very old time joke. Um, yeah, and one thing with, with the challenges coming up, it really is how do you get that data, but how do you, in, like, incentivize people to do it because the insights is important, but no one's going to log on to an app and just read. You know, it seems like you should, this is important stuff. So we're trying to do that by asking questions and learn from them and really presenting little nuggets of information to help them and set the path of, I want to know more about this. Wage theft is the primary example for it, but no one's going to go on and read about wage theft on their off time. It's just, it's just not what people do. So we're trying to find ways of asking a question, providing information back to lead them down that trail to learn more so they can get for their rights. Okay, something like that. So lit literally a heat map where you could look at a you know, location level of detail. So these are a bunch of Walmart locations locally, different issues uh, regarding pay, discrimination, harassment, schedule issues, and you could literally you know, find the hot spots and then decide uh, what you're going to do about that, and then drill into the, the detail, and, and I'm sure Ryan and I will have a longer discussion on that. And we are colorblind friendly, because I'm colorblind, so we work Oh, okay. Good, good to know. So, we talked about trying to get more data, uh, try to make it predictive, so for unions, who, uh, uh, you know, worker at a location, one of the key things that a union organizer has to figure out is who can I work with at that location who will be a good internal organizer, will help rally their colleagues around this idea of uh, forming a union at that location. For, for attorneys, it's more who has a good case? Which are the cases that are most likely that I can win, that I can certify, uh, and then make some money off of? And then enforcement, because resources are always uh, stretched, where can I get the biggest bang for my enforcement buck? So that's, that's kind of the, where we are right now, a long way to go. Uh, there's this proverb that I ran into uh, just a few weeks ago that seemed very apt for what we're trying to do with workplace transparency. So if your enemy wrongs you, give each of his children a drum. Uh, so I, I, that worked for me, so that's, that's kind of our, uh, our little motto. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, have you translated or put this into other languages? It's in Spanish and Polish because Chicago. Um, but yeah, so that was a key requirement right up front was to architect it so it could be easily uh, translated. Um, We're, well, prob we're definitely not doing enough. So, it, and it's a bit ironic because 20 years ago, 
I was at Accenture and I was one of the people promoting the idea of usability testing uh, and interaction design and here I am not doing nearly enough of it. So um, it, it's challenging getting the right kind of users. So I, this is one of those situations I can't go to people I know and say, hey, could you try the app? I mean, I can get their opinions, but they're not, they're not representative. Uh, so we've been trying to get to worker centers, which are kind of like baby unions. They don't do certification elections, but they do help workers. Uh, that's been a slower process than I would have liked. I was hoping to really partner with them, uh, work with their members, uh, help get signups that way, but also get a lot of feedback. And it, it just hasn't happened as quickly as I would have liked. You would uh, uh, try working with the Interfaith Workers Justice? They're on the list. We have made some attempts. If you can make an introduction, I would love it. Okay, thanks. Uh, do individual workers get tracked and do they have to make an account? Is that something that's <coughs> They have to create an account. That uh, it's a barrier for people to start using that. That's definitely a hypothesis. I mean, we, we try to clarify that, you know, your responses are anonymous and we're aggregating them, not necessarily going to be compelling, so we've got to figure out a way to do that. I mean, part of the problem is we're just not known. So there's no, uh, our voice isn't a known brand of something that, that you can trust. So uh, people are, at least think they're, they're taking a risk. So it's a concern. Uh, and there is an opening part once people join in that we have, they have to go through a three-step process, which kind of allows us to evaluate who's actually not just signed up and, and is using it and, and attempting it. And we are 90% are getting active that join up, which is an incredible ratio. I mean, the, the, the reaction we get when I, I mean, I literally go to restaurants and I hit up on the servers and, hey, try this, and I describe it and they say it's fantastic, and then not all of them sign up. Uh, so we haven't quite gotten in their heads of what's, what's stopping them. Uh, because it's all anonymous, how do you go about verifying this, say, if someone's just kind of disgruntled and wants to this offer? So, well, there are a couple things. Uh, we don't, I think, do this quite yet in terms of validating their location so that uh, we can kind of fight uh, kind of sock puppetry or, or astroturfing. Um, statistic, we were asking basically mostly numerical questions. How many hours a week do you get? Uh, how far in advance is your schedule? Uh, we do ask some kind of Likert scale stuff for the advancement, safety, respect kind of stuff. We don't allow comments right now. One reason is for that. The other reason is to prevent workers from outing themselves. So the scenario could be Jimmy's at McDonald's, he burns his hand on the fryer, goes to the first aid kit, first aid kit is empty, goes to the manager, manager tells him, oh, go put some mustard on it. Not the preferred treatment for a burn. This has actually happened many, many times. Um, I don't want Jimmy to report that story, have his manager see, oh, that's Jimmy, let's fire Jimmy. Uh, so right now we don't do that. I mean, it, it requires moderation and all that kind of stuff that, you know, we're too small to do. It's one reason, you know, we don't show how many people have rated a job because then you can kind of figure out who's doing it if there's been one person or two people. So we, we're, we are mindful of that. But most of it, this is statistical, so we can kind of throw out the highs and the lows and, and we work on medians as opposed to averages and try to do that. Go ahead. There's an umbrella organization called Raise the Floor that works with eight organizations yep. across the county. Have you talked to them yet? Yes, I have. Uh, they're not stepping up yet, but uh, <laughs> if, if you know them and can, you know, say, hey, you should talk to this guy. <laughs> right. What's that? I've been texting their people while I'm sitting Awesome. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm going to get make sure I. Uh, so, how much of the uh, information is it, is all the information available without creating an account? If you just want to see the statistics of uh, a workplace, or do you have to create an account to see these things? You have to create an account. Yep. Uh, and, and why? Or I guess there's there's a trade off there where that's like incentive for people to create an account, but less use for the people who don't. So, what was kind of the thought process behind that? Oh. It, it's we a free app. Data. I mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, it's tough. It's, you know, a large part of that, again, we need people to join to have the data in there. And, and right now, that's the initial part. And but it, I can it, definitely see it moving towards the future. It's not a burden. I mean, if you create an account and you're not working, you can still see the data. So we're not preventing people who can't work. But 
we, we think it's perfectly reasonable to, to ask people to create an account. Can I sound like a silly question, but is there a way for a company like maybe a larger company to actually cooperate with you in terms of an incentive or in transparency? This is tricky. Uh, so go back to the Jimmy burns his hand on the fryer scenario. Uh, so McDonald's takes a, 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 pu a reputational hit because when those stories get in the paper. And you have to believe that McDonald's absolutely has a policy that says you will have a fully stocked first aid kit in each restaurant. Franchisees don't necessarily follow that. So you could argue that McDonald's would have a, an interest in making sure that its corporate policies are being followed uh, and that our voice would be an independent vehicle, vehicle to allow that to happen. Um, it, but it gets tricky, you know, in that, so in that scenario, yeah, you can see how the, the benefit would be there. It would be both in the benefit of McDonald's and for the worker for, for that to happen. Um, it's not always, it, it's tricky though, I'm not always sure that I can guarantee that that will be in the best interest of the worker. The other issue is you bring that up with unions and they're not happy uh, because it's like, how can you serve two masters? So I don't, it may someday, we may be credible enough, sort of like JD Power ratings that uh, we can say, you know, we're credible data uh, and we can sell that data to employers. but. You know, the primary, you know, the prime directive is to work in the best interest of, of the workers, so. And outside of that, not just companies. I mean, organizations themselves, we are looking for ways to do that, given them the analytics and the information. So we're looking, you know, employee first for everything. So it doesn't have to be the company, but groups and organizations, <laughs> definitely, for, for getting on board. Have you tried to get with uh, job search sites? Not yet. I, I'm not sure I want to open that conversation. Yeah, right now we're, we're focused on kind of employer ratings rather than kind of job availability. Um, we may get there. I, I'm just a little afraid of competitive reaction. I mean, somebody who's looking for a job, a posting for a certain location comes up. It could be tagged with like, your, you know, it could be like this is a red flag or a green flag. Or we might get there. Right, you know, there's kind of, again, small project, how, I'm, I'm trying to contain scope, but it, it's, it's definitely a possibility, absolutely. So I agree, but yeah, too many balls in the air. Okay, two more questions? Sure. How come it's not that all the data is legit, so like employers are not giving good feedback about themselves? Yeah, so again, we, we, we basically we're asking factual questions. Uh, we're going to, we don't yet, I believe, kind of validate location. So if you say, I live here, I work here, and the data is coming from uh, Benton Argosaw, you know, Walmart's uh, headquarters, we're gonna toss that. Um, and, and so that's where, you know, some of the machine learning and analytics will have to come into play to, to kind of filter out some of that stuff. And it's a good problem to have. So that means they're looking. So but we, it's definitely addressable. Well, I guess that's it. That's it then. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, what? Sorry. One, two, two quick things. We're, we're going to hold kind of a, a one-time breakout, I guess, in the, the dining area. Uh, if you want to ask additional questions or if we have feedback, uh, ideas for how to go forward, particularly on the analytics piece. And... Uh, the app isn't really designed for probably many of you in the room, but if you want to let people you know that could benefit from this app, we have a bunch of little uh, palm cards. You're welcome to take a uh, short stack and, uh, and pass them out. Thank you. All right, thank you.